that are collectively owned by every other person or what is commonly referred to as the home owners association a group of people that have bought units from or that have bought units seated on the same building owning each unit separately but owning these other spaces collectively that those are the two major aspects barbara that every other person needs to understand so when it comes to i would want to get to know what's the difference between that condominium and normal apartment well, that, that, that's very important, by the way, to ask. And it's a very, very uh, good question, Barbara. But I think what a viewer needs to understand, Barbara, is that the building of an apartment for rent, or if you're building your, your housing developer, Barbara, and you're trying to put up apartments that are going to be let out, there's no particular design for a condominium ap apartment or a condominium unit. And there is no uh, particular design for a, an apartment to be let out. If you have an engineering background, you know very well that constru construction is construction. I mean, you will build normally. However, the things that differ, these two, an apartment, an ordinary apartment, and a condominium unit, are things to do with, one, ownership. Condominium housing, you could come together as a group of people. Uh, let's say you are about uh, a group of 20 women, and you have... You know, and you have maybe saved your money or you have gotten your money from somewhere and then you just want to put up this building and you have your 20 units so you're going to build them on top of the other for example or you're going to build you know in the same space down whichever space that you, whichever design you want and now when you build them everyone is going to own an individual title so i would want to ask if each one owns the apartment what about the land on which it is seated how do you you know do you subdivide it? How do you do it in trying to make sure? You're wondering how you're going to have ownership in space. Exactly. That's, okay, and, yes. and, and you are wondering the same. Yes, exactly. So this is what we have to understand tonight on the Property Hour. That ownership of a condominium, the Condominium Act has provided laws on which housing developers, whoever is going to develop, even if you're a group of women city housing developers because yes. you're decided to build houses, mm. and then if you're just an individual uh, developer or you're a company housing developer trying to put up houses to sell them to other parties, mm. one thing you should know is that you have to follow the rules and regulations of the Condominium Act by the laws of Uganda. And these things are provided for, one, you must make sure that you are going to subdivide your big title. Just ask me what happens to my title because you're so attached to it, Barbara. Eh? Exactly. You have saved a lot of money to make People this. People have a perception that yes. to own something, mm. land has to be part of it. So you explaining that is how can we actually open our eyes that we can have an ownership of a house or the one you're calling a condo and that's what right I'm coming, now in Uganda. Exactly, Barbara. That's what I was coming to. I was trying to... Uh, make a viewer understand that when you have this big title you will you will develop with it it's fine you could decide to have your titles before you develop or you could have them after you developing develop. mm -hmm. so assume we don't have to let, let's let's build and do the titles later yeah you know in, in, in our scenario right mm -hmm. now so we are going to build a house right away and then we are going to have maybe say 50 units mm -hmm. seated on a big title mm -hmm. Now, this title in the Ministry of Lands that is a custodian of our mother titles or our, our other copies of titles is that they have custody of this big title and that's what they know. But when you're developing here, mm -hmm. there are other authorities that the government has put in place to guide with planning. Let's say that municipal councils, let's say Interim Municipal Council, Chira Municipal Council, KCCA Planning Authority, these are the where the planners are, the engineering uh, people are, and then the town clerk as well. So these people help with the structures, uh, structure approvals and architecture approvals. Now, these are the people where you will go to first. For condominium to titles. Tell them that, look guys, what you approved, what mm. I built, mm. I think I want to make this a what? A condominium mm. setup. Mm. Now, the moment you submit to them, they will approve, they will say, okay, fine. According to the Condominium Act, you can pass. Why? Because you have enough parking space. People can live in separately, uh, so individually, tell in me an apartment. The, the law has, to what extent should a condominium accommodate the owners? Like okay. what you say, because you talked about parking, you know. So you're saying like each condo should, the law says each condo should have like two parkings? Or okay, what? the law is that specific. I want to know like more of, 
what are those requirements for some structures unfortunately to be for Barbara, un unfortunately from my practice in the condominium housing i think the law is silent on the provisions of traffic rules when it comes to a condominium setup and i would say that's a loophole I mean, I pray that uh, the, the lawmakers can hear this tonight because it's a loophole. People are providing parking spaces to their advantages, and these are housing developers. So we are calling out the housing developers kindly to look into these things. Now, it is also on to the planning authority to make sure that by the, before they give you a traffic uh, assessment uh, certificate... Or before they approve those doors. Uh, before they yes. approve them, at least let them make sure that each house has two parking slots and that's what it is supposed to be by the way by practice even by the planning authority it is supposed to be that but barbara from practice i can tell you that that is not what is on the market so what should be on the market not just parking space give us more on it what should be it like i just be, told you, know. you it should be two parking slot per unit because barbara nowadays a condominium house accommodates a family you know by standards we assume that a family has at least five heads so that means these five people, perhaps there is a, their two parents, and everyone owns a, a, a car. A car. Yeah. Or even their children have a car, and those are three cars. Yeah. Where are they going to park in this condominium setup where you have given them one parking space? Mm -hmm. So, to me, dear planning authorities, in case someone is listening in tonight, kindly go ahead and make sure that you do not approve this kind of drawings yeah. before you are sure of parking. So, Barbara, back to our... Our, our ownership of the big title yes. your worry was about if i have this other small unit title yeah, yeah, yeah. and then what happens to my big title i'm yeah. going to take you through a, a very simple procedure mm. when you submit to these authorities mm. they should approve and they say fine you can pass you have more than two parking space per unit you know you have common areas you have a common tap you have a common common lights for security and all that so that means you have a common playground for people to go and enjoy their lives that means it's okay people can come here and enjoy spaces collectively and as well as someone enjoys their space inside the house to whatever extent they need because that is now privacy mm -hmm. if you, and you encroach on it then you're you know, those, those, those are some of the things that people want if you buy a condo you know i have all these thousand yes, neighbors and yes. thousands of owners in the same space yes barbara now now to emphasize more on on, on ownership barbara something that we need to understand is that when we have our separate units, Barbara, you are my neighbor, you are unit one, I'm unit two. Everyone has their unit title. However, the other title is still standing because when we were subdividing, yes. it came out and it read, in, uh, Lance is very, very smart. They put it in red and they say, Barbara, the owner yes. of block this plot, this condominium number, this. Yes. Developer of 50 units. Yes. Assume I own that property, Barbara, and I want to go to a bank mm. for a mortgage. I would not. Because the bank is already aware they're saying you're a housing developer of 15. So the bank should be able to ask themselves, who are the owners of that the 50 yeah, units? Yes. And what happens to this title? Is it going to be a mighty title just there yeah. holding that name? No. Later on, when you all buy, the law says if it is above 50% and the housing developer has sold more than 50%, the owners should come together and form what we call a home owners association. So when you form the HOA, that means you are in a position to go ahead and claim ownership of oh, the big title, title from yeah. the developer. So Barbara, just like I mentioned that we had Barbara, the housing developer, all 50 units. We are going to cancel. Same red pen. And then we are going to have you entered in black that now you are the home owners your homeowners association in ownership be, yeah in ownership yes but it should always stand and sh it should always indicate that at least this development has 50 units yes. however the ownership page yes. will change yes and it will come from the housing developer to now homeowners so legally this is a communal property okay so you own that whole property communally yes oh okay so how i would want to know how long can someone like own a condominium wow now it goes back to our to our um land systems in uganda barbara because legally the constitution provides for about four and that is a private milo that is the leasehold freehold you know and the customary land mm. now what happens is that if the housing developer bought this property on a lease mm -hmm. then definitely the, the condominium, condominium titles, is also a lease. and then we got wow. the laws of 
of lease ownership. If okay. you are a foreigner, you're free to own. Mm. If you are a Ghanaian, you're still free to own. But then a foreigner, by individual names, cannot own a private minor title unless they have part of a company which mm -hmm. is also having a majority shareholder as a Ugandan, that's when you can own this property as a company. So because people would wonder, is a condominium a leasehold, is it? It's everything. So it's like, it depends on it's the kind everything. of ownership, the original land ownership. Exactly. my understanding. Yes. So because that's, it's good to clear because mm. some people never get to know what the interest in that land for the developer. And, and I think... You should now help us encourage what should a buyer look out for, especially when they are trying to buy this condominium? That's a very, uh, that's a very beautiful question, Barbara. Mm -hmm. And I, I always uh, call upon the housing developers, especially the Ugandan housing developers, to take it upon themselves to educate the Ugandans of what they are going to buy. Because if you are a Ugandan and you want to buy this house, what should you look out for? Number one, mm -hmm. confirm whether this is a condominium property by ownership run a search at lands because there should be a so condominium if you run number. a search at lands it gives you the owner the old, it will give you the developer's name okay. it will give you the 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 condominium number okay which makes it a condominium yes. now the moment at, at conversion like i told you is an example of when people first build and then they convert now at conversion you get a condominium number okay. now that is by law what is called a condominium Oh. Because otherwise, I will have my beautiful apartments, well furnished, and I'll come and I say, "Hey, there are condominium apartments. Please buy one. Give me three and take this. I'll give you the key. You'll be in for a year or two, but then you'll never have this title. So make sure there is a condominium title and run a search with the Ministry of Lands mm -hmm. and be able to confirm that hey, this is a condominium title with a registered condominium number. Quite interesting what we are learning about condominium because personally. Uh, you know, I would want to dig deep and know more before I make out that purchase. Let's go for a short break and we'll come with more on this program. Lulu Residency in Munyonyo is the latest apartmentalized project by HK Properties. This state-of-the-art residency that has tipped the architecture scale in Uganda has two to three bedroomed apartments at modest rents. Scheduled payments can be arranged to fit your budget. For more information or booking, please call 0758-274-389. We are still at Property Hour and we are talking about condominium concepts in Uganda. It's everywhere and we want people to understand, can they be part of it? So what are the things to look out for? I mean, Barbara, uh, something that you need to, uh, uh, also you as a home buyer, need to look out for, just like any other building, technicalities. Look up, just, just, just run a structure integrity report, Barbara. How was this building put in place? Get a structure engineer. Let them confirm with you that this structure because barbara me and you were not there when this property was being built but want to come and purchase at our convenience we can't be sure what is this uh, this you know these walls we are we are saying that's love so just run a structure integrity report look around things like the drainage system how are how are they because barbara you don't want to be in an apartment in an apartment where there is a poor drainage system it, it, it is it is not even accommodative at it all. It becomes it's a nuisance eventually for it, the community. Yes, even for the community at large. It's not habitable at all. So look out for the habitual factors in a property that at least even if it was your own home, separate home somewhere, you know, you could enjoy it. So the fact that you're in a condominium setup, it should not be inconvenienced. It should be instead the most beautiful space to stay in. Compared you know, to even you've talked about like separate home. owning these condominiums, but now once i have owned my own condominium and another person is below me and probably the upper person wants to demolish or wants to do changes to 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 the condominium to what extent is that allowed or curb especially in condominium development well just like every other project barbara uh, there are changes they could be in place as long as you know there are control measures in place that are followed now with a condominium the kind of control measures are on the exterior of the structure you know the elevation of the whole building and everything now when you are going to make changes if it is your interior and you want to change the painting you want to break your kitchen and make it half your phone it was a you know a full you know a closed kitchen and you want to make it an open kitchen or half kitchen whatever you want to make it the concept that you would love it is okay 
okay because it is your house. However, any other interior change that you're putting in place like should never affect the structure. Should not, exactly. Mm -hmm. Should never affect the structure of the house because, Barbara, if you tamper with the home of this house, definitely you know what will happen to exactly. the donor house. Mm -hmm. Now, ideally, it is not acceptable at all, totally unacceptable to break your house like you assume you're like me i'm done okay. I, I i want this house off you guys stay there like mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm just imagining barbara this is a whole uh, uh, this is a whole block and then someone on you in the middle like something like unity nine says no i don't want to be part of this condominium setup i'm so tired of the condominium charges in this place let me break and i go away totally unacceptable and this also is governed by the law barbara you, you uh, just, just a minute, Barbara. It is governed by the law because there are management rules. There are condominium management rules. You sign them before you're part of this. Place. Even if you bought, you must abide by the rules. No, and those it are the brings rules. me to a very interesting, interesting question. Because when many people buy a condominium, they think once they've paid the cash down and that's the end of it. You've talked about charges. You know what? What do they need to know about these extra things that they need to be part of? Barbara, a good housing developer, a good Ugandan housing developer is going to guide their condo home buyer from day one. They will tell them what is ahead of time. They will prepare them and they will tell them, it's okay, you'll pay your money and you'll become the homeowner by law. However, you must live and abide by the rules of the condominium community. And this is how it is done, dear viewer. You have to make sure that you read through the management rules. The Condominium Act has put them clearly. For example, you should communally clean the place. You should communally maintain the place. You should communally safeguard the place. That means you should have a security guard. That means you should have a cleaning service in place. That means you should have lights on for security purposes. If it's cameras installed, whatever. If you have a swimming pool, it is clean. You know, that kind of thing. Why? Because it should be a habitable home. Just like your home. Imagine, Barbara, at home. Don't you pay your maid? Sure. Don't you pay a guard? Of course. Don't you? That doesn't the garbage collector come and take money and you pay them? The same things. Carry them to the condominium community. Because I'm sure there are some big-headed... Now, Barbara, you big -headed don't... Big-headed <laughs> condominium owners who don't want... Who say that once they've paid the condominium of those charges you know oh no it's good for that for us to know so that whoever is out there and is holding a condominium you make it easy for the rest of the people living in that same space isn't it i remember to be honest yes. with you that is what happened that is the order that that's the practice in the yes. market space i uh you don't want to cross over the management of the condominium. Uh, the person talking to you right now has been there and it is the worst experience on earth these are elite people they but trust me, uh, trust me. Need, that's they, why we're sensitizing people not, out there that if you're pay. purchasing a condominium, mm. you need to know that above and beyond purchasing it, you have to pay garbage fees and all those yes. fees because you're living in an association. Exactly. So I have understood the charges like now for me, but I'm sure there are people who never appreciate the fact that those spaces need be kept. I think Barbara, it's about uh, sensitizing these people. People should just have to know. And also, that's like I told you, a good Ugandan housing developer should prepare these people ahead of time. But also, maybe just to uh, help enlighten on something important, Barbara, to our viewer, is that this condominium charge is not set by the government of Uganda. It is oh, not set by the housing developer. Wow. It is not set by <laughs> any person. It is set by the owners. Oh, that's wonderful. Through the association of, uh, of registration, through the homeowners association, you sit down and agree. Ah, oh, come on. We stay in Kololo. How much do you think this house should go? I mean, we are getting 2,000 USD per month. Honestly, this place should be needs 247. The kind of lighting should be that end you get. Okay, let's just pull 150 per month USD or 100 USD and we are catering for all this. Come on, Barbara. Me, I stay in Ichitukutwe. For example, honestly, eh, come on, I am getting only UGX 1 million. So how do you expect me to build 100,000 USD, 100, USD for this? No, let's just collect Uganda shillings 50,000 and then we communally manage the place. So it goes back to the owners and their kind of standards that they are living in. It enlightens, especially people who are out there who want to make investments. Because I'm thinking, a condominium, if I'm in, in Kololo, when will I ever own land in Kololo? Sure. 
how much how how much time do I need to save to own land in Tinder? Uh, or do I opt for going very far off, say Gaiaza zero way to find the land that I want in the money I have and be but how long will it take me to get from zero way to Kampala to work? You know? It's quite the distance, the time and the the time of investment and yet with just one purchase. It opens very many opportunities. Wow. So remember, I, I could sum up all this by, uh, by telling the viewer that, I could sum up all this by telling the viewer that what makes it a condominium is the kind of ownership and management. As simple as that. The rest is everything else the same as building any other house. Wow. So would you encourage actually someone to get involved in condominium development? Absolutely. With the, with the spaces now, with even the way people, I mean, the kind of population that we have, I mean, we have a deficit has shoot. As of this year, it has shoot to 250,000, and we are on 47 million population. What are we waiting for? Let's shoot to the sky. You know, there are many people who have actually built apartments, but now they wish actually to turn these apartments into condominiums. How do, you know, how do they begin? Yes, they've already made that decision, but now they feel like, okay, what if I turn them into condominiums? The conversion by law is, is okay. Even when you have built, you can always convert. I talked about it in the beginning. You can always convert and turn the building into a condominium. Violet, thank you so much for sharing this whole information with us. And I'm sure the viewers out there, you've been enlightened to the most extent to know what is it about condominiums. The condominium law, you know, how do you live in a condominium setting and be able to thrive? as a person and here at property we are always ready to give you all the information you need regarding real estate and construction the property hour is informative inclusive and up to date proudly powered by hk properties is a feeling of love, devotion, and the willingness to sacrifice for one's country. I say 